One of the coolest things about smart people doing smart things is sometimes those smart things end up making awesome music tools. The algorithms behind Autotune, for instance, were created to help interpret seismic data for oil companies. Tape recorders, vocoders, and all sorts of military and communications technology weren't originally planned to help us make music, but ended up being intrinsic to modern music production. The same could be said for convolution, a fundamental mathematical operation used to combine two functions or signals to produce a third function. Convolution plays a crucial role in various fields such as mathematics, physics, engineering, computer science, uh, particularly in signal processing and image analysis. In image processing, for instance, it's used for blurring, sharpening, and edge detection. In deep learning, particularly with convolutional neural networks or CNNs, convolutional layers are employed to automatically learn features from input data. In digital signal processing, convolution can be used to transform one signal using the properties of another, making things take on the audio qualities of a device, space, or almost anything. Since this is theoretically a music channel, we're gonna focus on the last example of convolution. I was approached by Mode Audio to do a video on their Airspace plugin, a hybrid convolution reverb and stereo delay effect plugin, and I pitched them a video on the history of convolution in music technology that also featured their plugin. So that's what we're gonna do. Learn about the way smart people use smart tools to make cool things we get to use as musicians today, and also check out Airspace. Without further ado, let's get to it. Convolution as a concept dates back to at least the 1750s and appears throughout mathematicians' works throughout the 18th century. The fundamental mathematical principles of convolution established before the 1980s, sometimes referred to as Faltung in German, composition product, superposition integral, and Carson's integral laid the groundwork for how we use it today. Here's a simple explanation of convolution in everyday terms. Convolution is like mixing two ingredients to create a new flavor. Imagine you have two sauces, a spicy sauce that gets mild over time and a sweet sauce that stays consistent. When you mix these sauces, convolution determines how the flavors combine at each moment. It considers how much spicy sauce is left, how much sweet sauce they're adding, and how the flavors interact. And the result is a new sauce where the spiciness changes over time, the sweetness is spread out, and you get a unique blend at each point. In technical terms, convolution takes two functions, like our sauces, and creates a new function, the mixed flavor, that shows how they interact over time or space. And this concept obviously is useful in many fields. Like in audio processing, it simulates how sound echoes in a room. In image processing, like we said, it can blur or sharpen pictures. And in statistics, it can predict combined outcomes of random events. It's a powerful tool for understanding how things blend, spread, or influence each other over time or space. Convolution as a musical technology was first realized for reverberation. And I've done a couple videos on the history of various reverb units, including convolution. So you can check those out in the video description if you want a refresher. But basically it was pretty slim pickings until the digital age for music tech when manufacturers started developing hardware reverb units that used DSP in the mid 1970s with things like the EMT 250. It wasn't until the late 80s and early 90s that digital audio processing became advanced enough to start conceptualizing convolution reverb. So the theory was there, but at first we didn't have the computational power to convolve the audio in real time. Things like sonar and radar have been using convolution for years to improve sound and visual images, but processing power wasn't up to the task of doing audio in real time. According to Sound on Sound, there were a few software-based offline convolutional reverb systems, but it wasn't until the end of the millennium in 1999 when Sony released the DRE S777 that we got the first real-time convolution reverb processor. And just look at it. Look at this thing. It's like a PlayStation 1 game came to life. It's like, it's like if Echo the Dolphin became a piece of hardware. It is so aesthetic. The Sony DRE S777 shipped with no analog I.O., just digital and you had to wait for minutes for the CD-ROM to spin up so the data on it could be dumped into the unit's memory before use. Sound on Sound claims that the reverb programs on the standard disc provided a worthwhile range of usable effects, each being clearly identifiable in their own right and amazingly natural. It says a con of the device is that it's bulky, heavy, and hot, but that just sounds like boyfriend material to me. That data that the CD-ROM had to load up before the S777 would work were its impulse responses. These are the second half of the convolution equation, the first being the signal you feed into the device. These impulse responses are small audio files captured in a variety of real-world spaces. 
Early experiments in creating impulse responses involved popping a balloon or shooting a starter pistol in an acoustic space and recording the result. These resulting audio files captured during this process are the impulse responses used by the reverb to convolve your input file into mathing it into sounding like it's coming out of that space. Remember the sauce analogy. It takes your input signal and applies different flavors over time. So we had hardware convolution in 1999, and it was bulky and hot and boyfriend. But the general public preferred twink convolution. So they all rejoiced in 2001 when AudioEase released Altiverb, the first widely available convolution reverb software. It came with a respectable library of impulse responses from acoustic spaces around the world, and each one was tagged with specific details about the space, including room dimensions, microphone and speaker placements, and other acoustic characteristics. It also allowed users to import custom IRs, which was huge. While perfect recreation of the sound of a physical space was a big deal, users could start using anything they wanted as an impulse response, which may have led to what happened next. But before we do that, let's take a quick detour to check out airspace from today's video sponsor, Mode Audio. I've been including demos of sounds through airspace throughout this video, but I would like to drill down into what's going on here and the wild stuff this plugin can do. Airspace is divided into four sections. Two of them are dedicated to convolution, and even though one says color and one says space, they are interchangeable. There's also a delay and a delay mod section, but we'll get to that later. We've been talking about convolution for reverb, so let's take a look at that. I'll turn off color and delay and just turn on space. And now we can choose an impulse response from the dropdown. You're gonna notice that there are a lot more here than reverbs, but I don't want you to think about that just yet. Focus, focus on the reverbs. We have five groups of reverb presets to choose from, one based on hardware reverbs, three based on different lengths of real spaces, and one set of springs and plates. Aficionados of vintage hardware reverb units should definitely check out the hardware reverb IRs. There's some cool stuff in there that you will recognize. Let's choose something from the medium spaces, of which there are a lot of very interesting ones. Like, not just halls, but things like yarn stores, dungeons, and uh, sound sculptures. Let's pick a somewhat neutral one and look at the controls. As we increase the mix, we may notice that the volume gets a little unruly, so we can use the IR gain control to bring that back in line. We can increase or decrease the IR size, which stretches out the convolution math. It's not the same as increasing the length of a normal reverb, and the results may surprise you. This church, for instance, sounds very dark and unnatural stretched long, but like a tight natural room when it's shortened. One of the cool things that Airspace offers that I haven't seen this way before is the envelope section. Here we can shape the attack, hold, and release of the impulse response itself, leading to a shape space that has a unique artificial quality. I like to combine this with pre-delay, which delays the onset of the reverb itself to make a soft sort of echoey reverb. You may notice, as with this palace dungeon IR, that there are certain undesirable resonances created within the space. The same would happen if you were in the actual space that this was recorded from because of the room's shape and material on the walls, floors, and ceilings. These are called room modes, buildups and negations of frequency due to reflection and the phasing of audio. In a real space, we would need to do some work on the space itself to fix this, but in airspace, we can use the EQ. I'll use the four-band EQ to carve this space up to be a little bit more aesthetic. Now the room modes are a lot less present, and we have this nice sort of room hiss on top, which is great for giving dry sounds a real feeling. Let's reset and I'll pick another sound and we'll check out the delay. And don't worry, we'll get to all that other cool stuff soon. If you have used an echo or delay plugin, you'll be right at home here. But in case you have it, here's the rundown. The delay can be synced or unsynced, and you can have the right and left act independently or link them together. One neat thing is that each can have its own independent feedback, which I haven't seen before in a delay. You can cross-feed the left and right delay outputs back into each other, and then finally, you can filter the highs and lows of the delay signal, which is great for getting bass out of bass delays to keep the low end clean, or take some highs out of the delay signal for a warmer feeling. Then we have the delay mod section, which allows us to apply LFOs to the time and pan of the delay signal. And we can get a huge variety of slippy, weird sounds this way. Mm -hmm. 
Last but certainly not least is the pitch shifting sections, which shifts the pitch of the delay taps in a set amount. You can make pitched shimmers, rich chorusing effects, or microtonal weirdness. Okay, so now that we've seen the more traditional stuff, let's talk about the weird stuff. Remember how I mentioned that as far back as the original convolution reverb altiverb, you could load your own impulse responses into the software? Well, if you check out the user submitted section of the AudioEase website, you'll see that people started to branch out past normal reverbs from the beginning. If you'll also recall, in Airspace, we had a whole section dedicated to hardware reverbs. You can make an IR out of anything, and that's what people started to do. One of the most common uses of this way of thinking is using IR to model guitar amps and cabinets. In the 2000s and 2010s, we saw convolution technology for guitar amp and cabinet simulation become much more prevalent. And in the last 20 years, we've seen companies build their whole product around it, like the Line 6 Helix, Kemper Profiler, and Fractal Audio's Axe FX units. In software, we have dedicated amp and cab simulations using convolution, the likes of Shuffman's S-Series, Box and Go Bugex, and a whole bunch of other ones. Heck, there are even impulse responses to make your music sound like it's being passed through vintage sampler DACs and preamps. But that's literally just the beginning, so let's check out Airspace again to see what's up. First up are the amps. We have a ton of amp models I would tell you more about if I knew anything about guitar gear. I can tell you that most guitars recorded DI, like straight into your audio interface. Uh, they benefit from an amp and cap simulation, so this could be helpful for you here. Next, we have this wild section of drums and percussion. Some of these are meant to add color to specific things, and some of them will actually transform your sound into a completely different one. It is really fun to poke around the found percussion, kitchen, piano, and experimental textures to see what crazy stuff they've added as an impulse response and what it does to your sound. Finally, we have loops, which are tempo-specific loops made to add rhythmic convolution to your sound. These are incredibly transformative and wild to hear. And that, my friends, is the video. I hope this has helped not only demystify the basics of convolution, but also gotten you excited about trying it yourself. Thank you again to Mode Audio for sponsoring this video. There's a link to the Airspace plugin in the video description. 
My name is Jeremy, this is Red Beans Recording, and I hope you have a wonderful day.